started my journey like three years back. Uh, but uh, currently, I'm working in Travelex. I got an opportunity because of this uh, course. Uh, SQL and any programming language is very, very important uh, to be a big data aspirant because uh, without that, we will not be able to understand things. Few companies will ask you really easy questions, but uh, they will check the basics in that. So if you're failing at that, then it might create a bad impression. I have also watched uh, different series on YouTube and um, I have practiced on hacker rank, a uh, little bit on lead code and also I used to take a note of everything, what questions I have asked and I used to make sure that in this interview, if I have not answered suppose five questions and if the question come again in any other interview, that should not go unanswered. So in one interview I was looking, means whenever I speak, I used to look upward. So he said that, are there any answers written? HR will tell you that uh, no, this market is not good right now. So you can, so never settle for anything less. Hi everyone, this is Mansa Rabraj from Trendy Tech. Welcome to another exciting episode of Conversations with Big Data Experts. Here is a remarkable journey of one such expert data engineer who is gleaming in the data industry. So, uh, hi Supriya, a huge congratulations on your recent switch to Travelex and a warm welcome. Uh, thank you for being a part of this session to share your knowledge and experience of the big data world with us. So, uh, would would be really happy to start off the session with your introduction. Thank you so much, Mansa, for this welcome. Uh, so, yes, introducing myself, my name is Supriya Zadav, uh, and I have enrolled into Sumitra's course like almost 1.5 years back and I've started my journey like three years back. Uh, but uh, currently I'm working in Travelex. I got an opportunity because of this uh, course and I'm very grateful to be here. And uh, about my educational background, I am an ENTC engineer with no prior coding knowledge. But yes, I went through it and it's been a great journey till here and I'm hoping the same in future as well, yes. That's excellent. Coming from uh, electronics and communication background and uh, excelling in the IT industry, that's an, uh, you know, like a tremendous achievement, I would say, uh, Supriya. Uh, well, so what are some of the key skills and knowledge areas that uh, big data aspirants should be prepared on? And uh, what are some of the specific resources or the study materials you recommend for the candidates uh, who are looking to excel in the big data industry? Okay. Uh, so first of all, I would say that uh, SQL and any programming language is very, very important uh, to be a big data aspirant because uh, without that, we will not be able to understand things. And uh, secondly, the uh, Sumitra's course, which is a full package of everything. Uh, so before joining course, I had a little bit of knowledge on SQL and Python. Uh, but as uh, I was into this course, when I started, then I came to know that, yes, I need to uh, be more good in SQL and Python. So I have also watched Sumitra's SQL series, which is on YouTube, which has almost, I think, 23 videos. It is in very detail and for anyone to start means uh, if it is a fresher also, I feel that that series is really good. One can watch that. Apart from that, I have also watched uh, different series on YouTube and um, I have practiced on hacker rank. A uh, little bit on lead code and also uh, so, sir has uh, shared some lead code programs also uh, in youtube series that also i have watched i have practiced so practice is really important but uh, coming to skills i think sql python is really important if it is a programming language and secondly uh, data big data technologies such as spark hive these are really important so some companies may ask hive also but still they will question you for spark too so I think these many technologies are very important. Excellent. That was a quick overview on what are the important key skills that a big data aspirant should have. And also a very important tip that you have given is to keep practicing on yes. uh, different uh, uh, scenarios, use cases as well. Excellent. Nice. Um, well, uh, the next question that I have in mind is, um, I'm sure that you have given a good amount of interviews, right? Yes. And uh, can you provide some insights into the different stages of a typical big data engineering interview from its initial screening stages to uh, technical assessments? If you can throw some light there. Yes, definitely. So I have given n number of interviews, like for four months at least I was giving interviews. Uh, so few companies, like I have encountered very few companies only take one round and uh, mostly uh, 
uh, other companies are taking two rounds both are technical and there are few companies who take online assessment test also like i have given for cognizant then ps so there are n number of such uh, sometimes it happens that the coding round the first round assessment i am if i am saying then it will have some coding questions they are mcq based mostly uh, questions on spark theoretically mostly high it will be there and if it is a python language then python programming we can select the language as per our convenience uh, it can be scala also java also is there uh, so those are the questions in first round if the online test we have then second will be your technical round with uh, the technical person uh, it almost uh, it is half an hour to one hour uh, it comprises of but i have given interviews which lasted for 1.5 hours also so there uh, they will ask you to write a code and uh, they will ask you technical theoretical everything they will ask sometimes they may ask you uh, different questions like how comfortable are you to relocate sometimes but not always but technical questions uh, mostly on hive uh, spark are there if you are saying any aws or any cloud technology if you are mentioning then that questions also will be thrown from their side so these are the like two three rounds and there is one manager round or hr round where mostly they will tell about uh, their company they will ask you uh, the managerial questions like how uh, how much node cluster you were using uh, what platform you were using whether it was cloud era or on prem off prem or cloud some like these uh, questions you may expect there are they are like general questions uh, what is your team size so these questions you can expect in that managerial or hr round and uh, then salary negotiation and uh, then yeah offer like that and these things yeah thank you so much for the brief on the different uh, interview uh, phases uh, well holding 10 offers at hand is not an easy task definitely were there any particular strategies or approaches that you followed to be able to achieve this remarkable success uh, yes mansa so uh, first of all I'm, i was very happy that i was able to do because uh, i have heard many success stories on linkedin on youtube i've seen and i never thought i will be also a part of it so that was a huge uh, achievement for me i was uh, really blessed you know uh, holding that many offers uh, but one thing i uh, kept in mind like i was giving interviews since april that consistency helped me uh, for first month i did not receive any good feedback from any of the company but i just kept in mind that i have to do my bit i have to uh, practice i uh, i have watched sir's video n number of times whenever i used to encounter an error i used to refer my notes but i used to go back to sir's videos and i used to learn so what happens is when you are giving interview we might think that interview went well but we don't know what interview needs uh, or asks from us like he, like he must be expecting something else so we have to figure out that that what exactly i can do so that the answers are more crisp and clear so uh, this thing so i used to take a note of everything what questions i have asked and i used to make sure that in this interview if i have not answered suppose five questions and if the question come again in any other interview that should not go unanswered so i used to take care of that that helped me so at a time means at a certain stage what happens is you know everything because you, from the previous experiences you have noted down and you have worked on it so that i have did and because of that it helped me to crack many interviews then third thing is confidence though sometimes happens that you know everything but you are not confident enough so one interviewer was continuously you know uh, asking me is it right so he was checking my confidence so if you know 100% that yes whatever i am answering is right you have you don't you have to stick to your part you don't have to get influenced by him so he will continuously check for that Uh, so you have to be confident calm sometimes what happens is uh, we are like afraid or we get nervous that oh this went wrong but it's fine so i'm giving interviews and i have reached to that stage where i was not feeling anything like yes if i'm giving good it's fine if not i will improve so that was my approach and uh, like on linkedin i'm getting many questions that uh, can you provide me notes but i would like to say that uh, prepare your own notes and uh, if you are not having time because people are saying you are not having time uh, look the course on 1.5x speed or 2x speed because sir is explaining in such a manner na things are going to repeat again and again and it's fine means uh, that i would like to suggest 
referring your notes and at any time you can just go back and see that particular video so for example if interviewer is asking about broadcast joint and you are not so crisp in that go back look the video i can tell that like three four times i have seen that same video and sometimes what happens is like three times you did not get that idea like what exactly is happening but fourth time now you get to know okay this is what interviewer is expecting from me so these things have helped me consistency then uh, looking the videos again and again and concentrating focusing and uh, yes that's the and don't give up like uh, i have given interviews like seven eight interviews also in one day you must be thinking that okay this company i will not join why should i give you just give the interview because you never know what you will learn from any of the interview and that helped me very much to uh, get like uh, through this interviews like getting 10 offers and it was a huge achievement for me for me yeah truly you are you're so right on that supriya having uh, getting that feedback from the interviews that you have attended can prepare you really well for the next opportunities that's one key yes. takeaway that you have mentioned and also yes. being confident in whatever you have upskill yourself with the technical expertise that you hold that's a very important crucial point there right thank you so much for that uh, supriya the next question that i have for you is uh, uh, what type of technical assessments or coding challenges can one expect in the interviews and uh, what level would it be and how should they approach them okay uh, so level is not so difficult it is uh, moderate easy to moderate few companies will ask you really easy questions but uh, they will check the basics in that so if you are failing at that then it might create a bad impression so sometimes what happens is we go for uh, big things and we miss the basic things so that we should more focus on uh, coding challenges uh, so as i was from non tech background means non it i was i never did coding in my college so or as of now like breaking a problem into two three pieces then analyzing it sometimes the solution is really very simple and it had happened with me in interviews but it's very simple and i'm think, thinking something of complex so interviewer has told me that maybe you can uh, find more simpler way and do that so that i have thought of that just go from some simple things because that will help you to solve the problems uh, coding challenges and also i would i would more focus on sql queries because they are really very very important and uh, you might think that the query is a uh, little complicated but just break into small pieces solve that and it comes when you practice so when you practice na sometimes if you forget also but still your hand works like okay this is the syntax syntax and you are going in the right direction and one more thing is whenever you are writing any code or any query first of all share the approach with your interviewer so what happens is sometimes we are wrong and maybe we will proceed into wrong direction so that is the reason we have to tell them and uh, they also acknowledge us because they also don't want that we should fail uh so they acknowledge us they tell us that yes maybe you can go in that direction then you can take that approval and then go ahead it will uh, make a huge difference when you are solving a problem right exactly yes. that's a uh, it would make your life easier there right uh, yes. so when you keep on interacting with them you might end up getting the solutions as well as, and go yes. in the right direction very okay. true yeah so um supriya with this uh, you have worked with companies like Uh, captain nine in the past and now with travelex uh, could you throw some light on the various kinds of projects that you have been a part of uh, yes so uh, i have been into one pine spark uh, project and which i have did on data bricks that time i was i was very new to data bricks i did not had any knowledge about it because i was little bit inclined towards aws so i never thought that i should work on data bricks as of now or azure but when it came like when there was a project and requirement i started and it things seemed easy a uh, few things like uh, i did it on my own few i took help and obviously course was always there so i used i used to watch that and uh, perform some operations uh, i have did one project in pyspark one on hive it was a migration project so uh, these two technologies i have used and uh, in one of uh, my project like it was a pos project that i have used aws services so not so much i have worked on but from that i have gained lot of information like if we have worked for maybe some time only in particular technology but i myself have deep dived into it and found out that yes what else can be done with that but mostly this technologies i can say 
Right. Um, well, beyond these technical skills, what are some of the behavioral or the soft skills that interviewers may assess in the big data engineering interviews? Uh, yes. So first thing is we should be very properly dressed. We can't wear anything and sit for the interview. Uh, then uh, when, whenever we are speaking, it should be very clear. And every time we should not face this internet issue. It happens. So we should find out that proper way or we should have a good connection because it really creates bad impression. Uh, on an interviewer that every time it is disconnected, they may think that you are copying also. So this may happen. Then uh, when you are speaking, have good confidence, your communication skills, your eye contact. So in one interview, I was looking, means whenever I speak, I used to look upward. So he said that, are there any answers written? So that time I understood, no, I should look into the camera only. I should not look up by mistake also because they might feel that. And one more thing was that my answers were really crisp and clear that he said, are you uh, really means looking, but here I would say that Sumit sir explains in such a way that that is already into my mind, whatever he has uh, used the words uh, basically. So in that flow, if you answer, he might also think that how you can be really good. So that I have uh, encountered and I was happy for that. Uh, and yes, this many like speaking skills, you should be confident. You should not uh, look here and there. Your hands should be placed in proper manner. Or you should not move again and again. And if there is something, you have to uh, tell that person, like interviewer, that I'm facing this issue. In advance, you can tell. So he might get not get confused. Your background should be good. Miss good in sense, it should be plain. It creates otherwise the interviewers uh, miss can see here and there, and it you know it's kind of distraction. I would say. So these things, little things, but are important. I would say. Excellent. Nice. Um, and uh, the last question that I have for today is, uh, what is the high percentage one can expect after transitioning into the big data world as per you? Uh, so as per me, I think more than 100% one can expect. Uh, uh, I would also say that HR will tell you that, uh, no, this market is not good right now. So you can, so never settle for anything less. Always uh, ask for whatever we des you deserve. So um, I think beyond 100% or 150%, some might get 200% also, it's fine. But it happens that uh, for me, I was like above 100%, I was fine and I, was, I got more like almost 150%. So I'm very happy with that. Thank you so much for being a part of the session, um, uh, Supriya. And uh, very huge congratulations again from Sumit sir and the team Trendy Tech. Uh, we wish you loads of success in your future endeavors as well. Thank you. It was a very great um, uh, session. You have shared a lot of information which will be helpful for all of our audience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mansa, for inviting me. It's a really great honor to me. So guys, if you have enjoyed the video and found it informative, do show some love and support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. If you have any queries related to career in big data, do mention them in the comments below. We will try to address them in the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.